Hi friends, you're watching Live Up TV. I'm Anastasia Zaitseva and today I'm interviewing Nirmal Purja. Hi Nirmal. Hello. If someone doesn't know, which I don't think is possible, he is a world record holder for climbing all the 14 8,000 meters peaks of the world, of the fastest climb. Yeah, just yeah. to confirm. Uh, so, Nirmal, the previous climb, the previous record was eight years, right? Yeah. Before you. And now the entire world is talking about your climb within six months and six days. Yeah. Uh, first of all, how did you come up with the idea of seven months? How, how did so, it come to uh, mind? Basically in 2017, uh, while I was still serving with the United Kingdom Special Forces, um, I was here in Nepal as one of the lead instructors for the Gurkhas to climb Everest. Um, so what happened that season was the fixing team couldn't set up the lines. Uh, I took the lead, we set the fixed lines for not only our team, but for the rest of the season's mountaineers as well. After that, I got back down to Kathmandu, uh, I partied with the team for a week, then um, I went up, then I climbed Everest, then I climbed Lutze, and I climbed Makalu within five days. Um, and at the end of the day, um, I was supposed to get a heli pickup from, uh, from the base camp, but because of the weather, the heli didn't come, but I had to go back to work. So. I had to cover six days worth of trekking in 18 hours at that point and I did that and at the end I was still fresh so at that point I kind of realized that I have so much to give in the mountaineering world so you know. Why seven months? <clears throat> to be completely honest you know, I had planned to finish this project within five months mm. uh, given the factors that I had fun, given the factors that there were no political um, you know, issues involved etc etc uh, and I said okay I'll have two months as a contingency factors and project possible 147 sounds good as well so yeah, yeah. that sounds great uh, by the way in your National Geographic interview they always mention that you call people like brother I just want to make it clear are you gonna call me sister or yeah, I'm gonna call can, you, can you call me yeah, sister? Okay, call please sister. refer me yeah. to as a sister <laughs> good let's Done. do it uh, so you were coming from uh, UK elite special forces mm -hmm. and no one heard about you at the mountaineering world uh, like few years ago basically. Well about seven months ago. About seven months ago, yeah. yeah, even that. So when you started and you faced that thing that no one believed in you, how did you find this strength in yourself to believe in your project when no one else believed? I think um to be honest, I had this vision and um, whatever I have done in my life, you know, it doesn't matter you know, either you know, someone believes you or not, you know, do you really be believe in yourself, you know, and I did, so hence the reason why I had only six years left to get my full pension, um, but I pretty much you know, gave up all my pension, more than you know, almost half a million pound worth, sacrificed my job and all. And, uh, to be completely honest, you know, this, this project was never about me, you know, and that's why I said, you know, if there's no greed, you know, if, if there's no selfishness, and if you're truly doing this for pure human endeavor, um, I think you'll get support from, you know, the bigger crowd, bigger audience, and also I think the nature was quite, um, quite humble to us as well. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> You've been checking out our videos. Well, you climbed K2 with the uh, unplanned rescue, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it Shisha Panga, even your last one, the number mm. 14, or even Shisha Panga, I wouldn't call it like calm weather. But if you say so, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure that you were not scared by all the weather conditions. But uh, it's also a huge financial responsibility to mm -hmm. get into such project. Yeah. Um, what did your wife say that when you remortgage your house? I think um, she was quite supportive, uh, to be honest with, and she knew that if I decide on doing something, um, 
she has always helped me. So when I went for the Special Forces selection as well, um, nobody believed that I could pass it because in 200 years of history, um, there was none of the Gurkhas going into Special Boat Service. So, but you know, I trained so hard for it. My normal training routine was, I used to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning, carry 70 pounds, um, do like about 20 kilometer run to the- to Every the, day. Every day, and then I start my normal military career, like day-to-day -day job. Then in the evening, I used to run back without, load, um, without backpack. Then I used to cycle about you know, 60 to 70 kilometers. Then I used to do freestyle swimming about you know, 100, like 100 times. By the time I get home, it used to be like roughly you know, 11 o'clock at night. And I used to train like that for four or five months. Um, I think for me, if I decide to do something, it comes from my heart. And after that, I put my you know, mind, my soul, everything into, into whatever the project is. So, yeah. And then she has been supporting that through and through. So. Even with their mortgage house. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you climbed K2 with unplanned rescue, you climbed four mountains with the, just like one climb without camping anywhere, right? Yeah. You climbed Kanchenjunga straight from the base camp. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff, like the entire mountaineering world talking about you and no one can believe that. So besides your nature ability to feel good at high altitude and your physical training, what else you think helped you to achieve this? I think I have amazing physiology. Uh, that, yeah. means it, that means that I think you know, I can climatize quite quick, but also the decision-making ability that I learned while I was serving with, uh, with the special boat service. You know, you are always put in a very stressful situation. Your mission is always like that, but you never phase out by that. You know, you always uh, kind of, you know, make the right decision looking into the scenario, situation and all. And I think that kind of you know, helped me a lot. Um, of course, you know, anybody can be fit, you know, but to have that decisions, I think I had this quite good composition of all those materials that you need to make this happen. So, yeah, you know, body can acclimatize quick. I had that physical ability, I had that decision making ability, I had good teams. And more than that, I think, we were like so disciplined, you know, when you climb one mountain, you come down, you are so tired, you know, you want to sleep, you know, you want to sleep for like half an hour, then you want to sleep for another hour, but we're like, no, you know, if you can party whole night, why don't you go and climb? Let's keep so climbing. partying basically <laughs> helps you, that's the solution. No, no not really, but I'm saying it's one of the things that you could always think positive, you know, if you can party whole night, we, it's a joke as well between our team, you know, it's like, yeah, when you party whole night, you are so happy. You are climbing here for the for something good that you're trying to prove. Why are you complaining about it? And we just like laugh and we, we yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Um, it all sounds really fun, but I know there were also difficult moments. Like after Annapurna, after you rescued Ching with, yeah. uh, from Annapurna, you missed your weather window at Dalgiri. Yeah. And Wikipedia says that you reached the summit of Dalgiri at 6 p.m. That's yes. true, right? Yeah. It's extremely dangerous. I'm a mountaineer myself mm -hmm. and I know what that means. So yeah. you climb down, you descend overnight, right? And then... Uh, Straight into the helicopter. Yeah, you uh, understand that it's dangerous, yeah. right? Yeah, I think um, for us, you know, Dolagri was you know, one of a challenging climb because the weather was extremely horrendous. The visibility was pretty much nil and and uh, I think about 7,500 meters, I gathered my team and I said, hey guys, we don't have to do this. You know, I'm okay, but if you guys feel like we need to turn around, and the guys looked at me and they were like, <laughs> who, you, who you think yeah, you are? <laughs> who you think you are? <laughs> it's like, yeah, Nimsen. But we climbed the whole agree pretty much um, almost without rope. So pretty much all on our ice axis. Uh, the wind speed was from 65 to 75 yeah, kilometers per hour. I remember um, that. Thing. Um, but I think when you really want it from here and here, and you get a good team... But you, did you, you realize it was this. dangerous? Were there any other moments during your no, think, expedition when you thought that your life now is really in danger? Um, I, I never thought of anything like that. I think, um, just to get back into the, the question, I think K2 was the only mountain where I doubted my ability because I've seen the videos of you know the, the Sherpa, the guys who were obviously fixing the lines, the avalanche and everything, and I have a big respect for them. And when they give up, I'm like, oh my God, you know? 
We tried the first summit attempt. Uh, nobody could make it. All the teams are just leaving base camp right now. Nims Dai made it here. And when he got here, he brought all his energy, he brought all his strength, he brought all his joy, all his optimism, and he thinks he can make it. Five of us, all the Nepalese mountaineers, made it to the summit. And we made it not only for us, we made it for everybody. But then I went back into the same principle. When you go for UK Special Forces selection, there will be so many like contenders coming into it. And sometimes out of 200, only seven or eight people make it. And if you listen to those 182 who have failed it, you're never going to try. So I just have, for me, I had to go and see by myself and make the decision as, uh, as things come. That was perfect. But my scariest mom, uh, moment was my third phase. Third phase was all easy mountains, but um, the reason why I was scared was now there's a load of hopes in me. Not only right. from, the, from the Sherpas, not only from my team, but the whole of the climbing community, okay? And um, I felt like if something happens to me, I'll just leave these guys, you know, without, you know, nothing. Um, and the story need to come out as well. So I was a bit scared, but obviously you know, I had to get this done. Um, yeah. Were there, were there any moments when you thought that, okay, it's not happening? Like, for example, when you had troubles with uh, Premi to Shisha Pangma or some other moment? I think um, when, at that point, obviously I gave 100% and I was meeting in you know, a four or five you know, ministers um, in a day to make that happen. And at the end, I felt like it's not going to happen. But, you know, my team knew that I was like, okay, if that's not going to happen, we're going to go and climb Everest in autumn. Uh, it's one of the 8,000 meter peak. Is the highest, and we'll just give bonus by climbing the Holagri as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have proved the concept. That was the plan. But thankfully, you know, uh, the go Nepalese government and the Chinese government, they they obviously thought about it, uh, and CTMA uh, allowed me the permission. So I'm very humble, and I'm very thankful to those people uh, who allowed me to complete this human endeavor. And that's when I realized that when the project is not about yourself. You know, everybody kind of unite together to make you know, things happen. And this is a solid example of that. Talking about Everest, uh, you're a picture of the traffic jam went viral. Not a lot of media, by the way, uh, mentioned that you were the author, but like I read your interview from New the New York Times and there was something you wanted to tell posting that picture. Could you please repeat for Live Up TV viewers, what was that and have your so, thoughts been heard? So basically, you know, I was trying to break more than seven speed wall record. One of them was break my own record from the summit of Everest to the summit of Velocity, which is 10 hours in you know, 15 minutes. Hmm. So. I couldn't break the record because I was stuck in traffic for seven hours. I still got 10, in, uh, 10 hours, 15 minutes timing, but I was stuck in a seven hours. So I just turned around and I said, okay, I took the picture just to say, hey guys, this is the reason why I couldn't break my own record. But obviously it took completely different form. Uh, but I think it's also good because um, the Nepalese government have looked into the, into the cases and that they're trying to keep the mountain more safer. Um, it is always better to be sooner than later, I guess. Uh, so that's pretty much a good point. But I was a bit um, upset with this um, media who has got the power, who has got this, um, you know, credibility. You know, they, they could have given the, the credit to me because I took that picture, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody did it, they just used it, you know? And I think I feel a bit embarrassed by in you know, a big media company doing that, you know? Even I didn't know, I told you, I didn't know it was you who took that yeah. picture. And you know, like, I'm, you know, like, I'm from Nepal, there are, like, Sherpas, like, from Nepal. Mm -hmm. I think they probably thought that, oh, this guy doesn't know anything, and they start, you know, just making their, you know, efforts Just reposting. It. Yeah, and I think that's pretty bad. Um, yeah, we're not stupid, I think. But are you happy that the mountain, like, the Everest is getting more safe, or...? Yeah, I'm happy, you know, and I think um, people tend to always complain about this stuff. Um, but with this one, I think the government had closely look into it. Um, thank God, you know, they're not going to increase the price now, uh, but they're going to look into the more skills and stuff, and then obviously accept the, um, the mountaineers accordingly. So you believe there should be a limit? Um, the limitation shouldn't be on the money. 
mm. or who has got how much in his pocket, but there should be a limit on the experience to go on in Everest. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, you resigned from the UK elite Navy and uh, you choose your career with mountains. Why mountains? Why you made this decision when you were six years uh, away from your like lifetime pension? Yeah. I think um, when you do like for me, you know, I was with the Special Forces for 10 years. I have seen things, I have done shit, you know. And when you do that, you think you are invincible. Uh, but when you go into the mountain, for me anyway, the mountain always put things into perspective for me. You know, the nature has always bigger and greater things to say. We are only human, we are no one. And uh, I really love that perspective. And for me also, it, the mountain, even though you climb in a second time, third time, it is always different, you know, it always challenges you and you are just there, you know, it's testing you, you know. And it is. You got to be loyal to yourself, you got to be honest, you got to be so disciplined and I think there's no second chance and it's a very fine line between being brave and stupid. It uh, is. So, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, and I think I, I love that all this aspect. So you think during your expedition, during the project possible, you were never no, I think, crossing um, the border? No, no, I think because um, everybody, me and my team, we came back home the same way we left. Mm -hmm. And every summit attempt is done in one shot. We never tried double, you know. Mm -hmm. So it all comes in the, into the planning, of course, you know, the team members. Um, and yeah, I think um, it was all calculated risks. So now your name is in the history of mountaineering forever. Everyone is talking about you. You reach all the 14, mm -hmm. 8,000ers. What can I, like, what possibly you can dream about? What else is there? What's next? Do you have any plans, dreams? Um, I do have. But I, I think, cannot, honestly, I cannot imagine what's more, what can be more. No, I, I do have, but I think, you know, the world needs to wait. Let, uh, me, let me get, you know, So you're down. not sharing right now? <laughs> I haven't shared this with anyone, so... Really? Yeah. That's something... Oh my god, if you're not sharing, I cannot even imagine what's that. <laughs> uh, By the way, um, everyone calls you Nims. Uh, is that a nickname that was stick to you a long time ago or...? Yeah, so when I was uh, going for the Special Forces selection, you know, my name is Nirmal. And then, yeah. you know, everything, like when you do break contact drills, you know, guys couldn't say Nirmal, so they call me Nims. Okay. And then when I started climbing, then all my Sherpa brother called me like Nims Dai, which is like brother. Oh. So it's like Nims Dai, Nims brother. What so, sister on Nepali? Uh, Baini. So I'm like Anastasia Bani. Baini, yes. <laughs> okay, great. I like it. Yeah. I have one last question. It's not exactly a question. I want to uh, give something from you okay. for our subscribers. Sure, sure. I bought, I nice. bought this thing today. and. Mm -hmm and a highlighter could you please sign it for sure. and um, uh, guys you find in the comments how to get it <laughs> back from Nims. okay you know what I'll try not to take it for myself I really needed to get to some of the subscribers oh wow but yeah here we go. I said, okay, I have said. Oh yeah, what's there? Always keep 100%. So what it means in life is, doesn't matter what your aim is, what your goal is, if you keep 100%, you can sleep in, in bed in peace, you know? So, and this is my principle, you know? When I do some things, I was gonna like, when I go to bed and if I can put my hands in my heart and said, hey, kid, okay, Nims, you have given 100% of what you could have given. And if you agree with that, job done. But if you feel like, oh, 0.5, I haven't done that, 0.6, I didn't do that, you know, there was a, a bit careless, then it's not 100%. So it's all about 100%. Wow, it's a great wish. Thank you so much for the interview. I was happy to have you Thank here. You. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> namaste. We can say it uh, when we say hi and when we say bye, right? Yeah. So namaste. namaste. Thank you. My dear viewers, uh, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video. I'm Anastasia Zaitseva. I talked to Nirmal Purja and bye. Leave up.